I ain't never in control around this place. Just ask my wife. Hey, Pinnacle Studio peeps. How y'all doing out there? My name is Malik, and I'm back on your screen with more Pinnacle Studio love from PinnacleStudioPro.com. Today, I'm going to be telling you guys all about how to get things set up in the control panel before you start editing. Let me know in the comment section below if you like this type of content. And if you do, I'll create a whole workflow series which goes from importing to exporting and all things in between. Let's jump into the software and make it happen. Here we are in Pinnacle Studio 21 Ultimate. Before we get started, I want to remind you guys to subscribe to Pinnacle Studio Pro to see great tips and tricks just like this every Saturday. Let's take control of this editing situation. I'm gonna show you guys the settings that I change in the control panel before I even get started editing a video. Let's go on a journey, my friends. Let's go on a journey. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up. And I'm going to go to control panel. So the first option that we have here are our legacy options. So if you want to have watch folders and watch folders basically looks at drives that you select on your computer to pull files into Pinnacle Studio to have available for you. That way you don't have to import those files or anything like that. So if you want to use that legacy feature, you can enable it here. You can see that I have it enabled right now because right now the only option I get is to disable it. And then it shows the folders that I have selected to pull the assets from. And then you can add a folder or you can remove them. Or if you select a specific folder, then you can remove that specific folder if you wish to do so. The other option here is legacy authoring mode. So if you don't want to use the pinnacle my DVD feature and you want to use the old school DVD and menu building and DVD authoring, then you would need to enable this feature. As you can see, I have it enabled because the only option I have here is a disable button. Now here at the top of the screen, you can see that I have the author tab here. And if I click on disable, it removes that author tab. And if I click on enable, it brings it back. Next, we have our audio device. So the audio device is the default device that you want to record when you're doing voiceovers and things of that nature. You can see that I have a specific microphone selected here. And if I click on this, it's gonna open up the sound options on your PC where you can go ahead and select a device that you want to use for the default for capturing audio. I'm going to click on cancel here. Next we have export and preview. So the first option here is the preview section. So these are the settings that allow you to preview and see the videos that you're adding to the timeline in your preview window. So the first one we have here is quality. So I have mine set to fastest playback. And if you want to see the highest quality, if you choose best quality, you will get the highest resolution available with that clip. But keep in mind that this will put the most strain on your resources and your PC, your graphics card, because now it's viewing it at the highest quality. And you may have some lag when you're editing because you're pushing the program and you're pushing your PC. So I have mine set to fastest playback because I don't care about the quality of the preview. I care about the quality of when I export it. And the preview quality has nothing to do with the export quality. What I see in the preview is just giving me a visual so that I'm able to edit. And when I put it on fastest playback, I'm able to do things with less lag. So I have fastest playback on my setup. And then next is show full screen preview. 
So if you enable the full screen of a monitor or you disconnect your monitor or you want to see it in full screen, this tells you where it's going to pop up. Is it going to pop up on the same monitor as the application or do you want it to populate on a secondary monitor? So you have your options here for that. I leave mine on same monitor. If you have dual monitors and you want it to pop up on the other monitor, then you should select other monitor as application. And that way it'll always come up on the opposite monitor that you have the ap application on. And then you have show external preview. So if you have an external monitor set up, a laptop or some other item set up besides your regular monitors, then it'll show up here. I don't have any external monitors set up, so I don't have an option here. And then if you have an external preview, you can choose whether it's in the PAL region or the NTSC region. And I'm in North America, so I'm gonna leave it on NTSC. So the next section we have is playback optimization. So under here you have a section called optimization threshold and I have mine set to 60 and it goes from off to aggressive. So basically what happens with optimization threshold is if you have effects applied to any of your clips, this tells you if you want it to fully render or if you just want it to render as much as it needs to, to play back. So if you have it on aggressive, it's going to try to fully render it. If you have it set to off, it's not gonna render it at all. And if you have it somewhere in the middle, it's gonna render it as much as it needs to to play back. So I have mine set to 60. And then the next setting is render while play. I have mine set to off. So basically what this says is, hey, if I start to play the timeline or scrub the timeline, is it gonna to continue to try to render while I'm doing that? And I have third party codecs off and hardware acceleration. I have mine set to CUDA. So based on the type of graphics card that you have, if you have a NVIDIA card, then you can have it set to CUDA. If your graphics are on board or on your motherboard, you wanna have it on Intel. And then you have the option of none if you have something other than an NVIDIA or onboard graphics. And then if you're using stereoscopic 3D, do you want it set to any of these settings? I have mine on Anaglyph. Don't really use 3D, but I just leave it set there. So next we have the import section. So under import, you get to select the different default locations for importing different types of assets. So you get to select the location on your PC for video, for audio, for pictures, for your projects, uh, snapshots that you save, all that good stuff. The next category is keyboard. So I don't really change anything on this one. Uh, these are basically just your shortcut settings. So you can click on any of these categories and you can see different shortcut or hot key, whatever you want to call it for these different types of commands and you can change them if you want. So the next section that we have are project settings. And this is one of the most important sections that I go into. It's important to make sure that you have this set up correctly each time you do a video. So the first thing that you wanna change is the video standard. So the video standard is the resolution and frame rate that you're going to want your timeline to be set to. So right now I have mine set to 1920 by 1080. 24p. I have it set up that way because the files that I'm going to use here are 1920 by 1080 and the frame rate for the files that I'm going to use for the most part are going to be 24p. And then also when I export, I'm going to export this to a 1920 by 1080 resolution, 24 frame rate file. 
So I want my video standard to match as closely to the file resolution and frame rate that I'm going to export to. Now there are many different settings on here. You've got uh, HD settings on here. You've got 4K on here. Uh, you've got standard def. You've got different frame rates. It's a bunch of different options that you have on here. The next option that we have here is detect format from first clip. So you can check this box if you want the system to always say, hey, what's the first clip that you put on the timeline? What's the resolution of frame rate there? And then the video standard will set up to the same resolution and frame rate of the first clip that you put on a timeline. Another important section here is your default durations. So these are the durations for things like titles. So if you know that, hey, each title I add to the timeline, I want it to be 10 seconds long, you can change this here to 10 seconds. And that way, every time you add a title from now on, it'll be a 10 second title and you can adjust the duration if needed. Same thing for stills or pictures. Anytime you add a picture to the timeline, you can choose the default duration for that. And then also for your transitions. So anytime you add a transition, you can choose the default duration for those as well. And then the last one that I really worry about on here is montage scaling. So when you are using a montage for a slideshow, you can choose to either have no effect when you add the pictures to it, you can make the pictures fit the template, or you can make the pictures be cropped to fit the template. So you have those options there. The next section that we have is the startup page. So when you open up the program, do you want it to open on the welcome page, edit page? You can choose the option that you want on here. Then we have storage locations. So this basically says, hey, these are the places that I want things to be saved at when I create or save these types of files in Pinnacle Studio. So if I create a multi-cam file or multi-camera file, here's where I want it to be saved at. If I create a project file, here's where I want it to be saved at. And your titles that you create and save, menus that you save, templates that you save, all that information. And these are really the default locations. I leave it at the default locations, but once again, if you decide that you want to save it to a different location, this is where you would add that information. And all you really got to do is click on the little folder here and you get to choose a location on your PC to save it to. So another really important section here is your render files location. So anytime you add a file to the timeline and it renders, it saves a temporary file of that render on your PC. So this tells you the location where those render files are saved. If you are having problems with your project or your files, sometimes you may want to delete the render files and it might clear things up. And then the last part on here that I'm going to talk about is the reset option. So under here, you can reset everything and start Pinnacle Studio off brand new, except for your save projects and your project bins. So if you're having issues with the program or something that you think is um, gone awry with the program, if you don't mind starting off and resetting everything, you can reset the program from here. Sometimes resetting the program helps it to kick back to normal and fixes issues from time to time. I wouldn't suggest using it all the time because if you're using watch folders and if you're customize a lot of stuff, then all your stuff's going to be wiped out and you're going to have to set all that stuff up again. All right, guys, that's it. I want to thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. It truly means the world to me. Now I want to send a shout out to one of my subscribers, Doyle Goss. Doyle Goss makes videos around the paranormal on his YouTube channel. So if you're into paranormal activity, checking out those crazy houses across the South and across other parts of America, head over to his channel, check out a couple of his videos. And if you're feeling what he's dealing, 
make sure that you subscribe. If you guys want to get a shout out like Doyle Goss did, make sure that you head over to the video description and fill out our shout out request form. If you got a tutorial you'd like us to make, head over to the video description and fill out our tutorial request form. Now that I'm done with that, I got a few things I need you to do for me. The thumb. The one that's pointed in the upward direction, click on it. It lets people know that the content in this video is good and that they should watch it too. If you got any comments, questions, you just want to talk or chop it up with your boy, leave those things in the comment section below. And last but not least, smash that subscribe button and after you do, click on the bell. When you click on the bell, you receive notifications every time that I upload content to YouTube and that way you don't miss out on any of the learning and all of the fun. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.